Hi, I'm Chris Carlson. I'm one of the senior FAEs here at Altium. A few episodes back, I talked about getting the layer stack up right and talked about some copper geometries you could build into your board to assure that your fabricator is going to get the right layer stack up. Several of you ask in the comments, how do you do this in Altium Designer? So I thought today we just jump into the tool and I'll show you how it's done. All right, here we are in Altium Designer 17, and we're answering the question, how do we do layer numbers and stacking stripes in Altium Designer? All right, now I goofed around with this a little bit in order to actually get um, the geometries the way I liked, and I'll kind of show you the process I went through here. I have a little test board, and this is where I started out. Now we need a layer number that has both a positive and a negative image. That's because on the signal layers, you know, it's obviously a positive image, but on the plane layers, anything we place on a plane layer is an absence of material, and that's why we needed the inverted image. Now when I started out making these, I outlined these with lines. Now you're probably familiar um, that in Altium Designer, a line um, does respond to the DRC, so that flags violations. I'll run a quick DRC here so I can kind of show you what I mean by that. So the lines are all, um, these are no net objects stacked on no net objects, and that's obviously a violation in Altium Designer, and I didn't want to have violations scattered around my board. So the next shot at this. I went to using fills around the outside and I actually like this better. It's um, nice and crisp. Um, when I did this one I kind of got the inversion of it backwards but um, here we have our layer number inverted and then the positive of the layer number. You'll notice um, there's a fill to the left of the number. This is to remove the copper on a plane layer um, from the other numbers that are to the left so you can see them through the board. Now in this case I actually got the inversion and the positive and negative aspects right. So here's a number that I decided I kind of liked and the inverse of the number and this is my final shot. Now when I finished this up, I actually extended the fill at the bottom of my signal layer numbers uh, to create a stacking stripe. You'll notice that goes off this dotted line which represents the edge of the board. So when the board is routed out of the panel, the copper will actually come right up to the edge. Okay, let's look at the library of um, footprints that I created. Now I have signal layer footprints and plane layer footprints. Um, the planes only go from 2 through 15 because we don't have a plane on the top or bottom board and I made this library so that it's appropriate for a 16 or less layer board. I didn't go through the effort of doing this for all 32 signal and 16 plane layers. I'll give you this library and if you need to extend that, you can just kind of take this paradigm and um, create the other necessary um, numbers. Now, so here is my um, plane, my first plane layer, which would be layer two in the stack up. I have a fill over here to the left, which removes material from um, the other, from the area where the other numbers will be placed to the left of this number two. And then I have fills around the outside. My number, I actually um, inverted that. That's how we were able to get the um, inverted two for the plane layers. And then I surrounded that then um, with fills on the inside. Okay, now for our signal layer, um, I have fills around the outside edge here. I extended the fill down off the edge of the board for our stacking stripe and our number is not inverted. Now you'll notice I also placed a polygon cutout 
around the outside edge of the signal layer numbers. This is to remove um, copper if we have a copper pour over the surface of that particular signal layer. And we'll make some adjustments to that once we get them placed in the design. I'll show you how that works. Now also for each of these numbers I placed a fill on the top and bottom solder mask to remove the solder mask from over the number so we could actually see the numbers through the board. Okay, let's have a look at placing layer numbers into a board. Here I have a six layer board. There are four routing layers and two plane layers. My internal routing layers are tightly coupled to the plane layers through core material. This would be how you would set up a board for high speed design. And you'll also notice that the plane pullback is half a millimeter. I'll show you um, how that comes into play here as we go along. Now in this board I've placed a room down here where we're going to be placing our layer numbers and in my design rules I scoped a clearance rule um, for zero clearance within this room. I actually used the quarry touches room and gave it the name of the room. The reason we need to do this is because these layer numbers are footprints like any other and um, by default Altium Designer does not allow you to stack footprints on top of each other without flagging uh, DRC violation. So this is going to keep our layer numbers from flagging that violation. I also placed a point guide down here so that we can align each of the numbers um, accordingly. Now in my piece in my libraries panel um, I have my layer numbers library here and we'll just start placing our numbers. Now my first layer is a signal layer so I'm going to use my signal layer one number and we'll move in here and position that and we will place the reference point of this number right on top of uh, that point guide. Now the next layer is a plane layer so we will use our plane 2 number. Press the tab key and we'll move this to internal plane 1 and we'll come in here and position that accordingly third layer is another signal layer so we'll grab signal layer 3 place that on the next layer down oops get a little mouse happy here sometimes there we go fourth layer is also a signal layer forget to hit the tab key and switch layers. If you neglect that you can always move it after the fact. Our fifth layer is a plane layer so we'll grab plane 5 for this. Tab key, move that to internal plane 2 and position that with the others. Uh, come on. Sometimes it helps to use the arrow keys. Ah, there we go. And finally, our bottom layer, which is signal layer six. Now, when we move this to the bottom layer, we also have to flip this on layer. These are footprints like any other footprints and you know as we flip a footprint to the bottom layer it becomes mirrored so we have to re-mirror that if you will when we're placing it in here. And that, let me zoom in here so I get this right. Oh come on. There we go. Okay, so we have our layer numbers placed. Now we need to make some adjustments to them. So I'm going to select all of my layer numbers and switch to the inspector panel. Um, 
you'll notice if I choose display all objects um, that room has been selected as well so you may have to make the adjustment to display only components first thing we're going to do is unlock the primitive so we can make some adjustments there and then we will hide the designators accordingly okay now when we built the footprints we could count on removing material to the left but not knowing how many layers we were going to have in our stack we couldn't really account for removing the copper from the other layers um, to the right so the drill we're going to do here now is adjust our polygon cutouts and then the fills in our plane layers to accommodate that so I'll go into single layer mode here just to make this a little easier and we'll drag this right over and we'll place it right there and again this if we have a copper pour on our top layer this polygon cutout will remove that material for us now on the plane layers we have this fill right over here and we can use that for removing material on the plane layers right about like that layer three there we go Put it right there layer four uh, come on get a little mouse happy here go to our last internal plane layer we'll pull this over to right there okay now the final adjustment we have to make is for our stacking stripes now um, this fill that protrudes down off the edge of the board we we want that those to stack up as we go across the board so we need to make an adjustment by pulling those over like so and we'll do that with each of our signal layers it's always more than one way to select an object using the arrow keys kind of helps with that a little bit okay now we're going to select everything again and display only components and we will lock our primitives okay now let's look at this in 3d and see what we've got now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the core so we can see through this. Now, you'll notice my plane layers, uh, layer two and five aren't showing up. That's actually a bug in the 3D view of 17. If I Gerber this out, they will show up fine. And I've checked this in the alpha version of 8018 and that has been fixed. So um, bear with it in 8017, when 18 comes out, everything will work fine. Now, if I rotate this board up a little bit, we can see our stacking stripes in here so when the board is routed um, out of the panel our stacking stripes will build up showing us that all of our layers um, are placed in the right order now the shortcoming of this is that on plane layers we can't use stacking stripes so what do we do about that all right I'm going to go to the top layer and I'm going to pour a polygon over the top layer and I'm going to uh, use a keep out around a layer specific keep out around the outer edge of the board to produce the pullback and so rather than using plane layers you can use signal layers and just pour a polygon over the surface with the appropriate pullback and 
um, then you can actually use your stacking stripes like I've done here on the signal layers. So I'm going to go to my board shape menu and I'm going to create primitives um, from the outer edge of the board. Now the pullback on the plane layers we noted was a half a millimeter. I'm going to make this keep out around the outer edge of the board one millimeter and that is um, the the board edge will be right down the center of this keep out so we have to make that a whole millimeter to get our half millimeter pullback. Now I'm going to drag from right to left and anything touching my selection box gets selected. And I'll select these. I'll hold the shift key while I do this. And now we'll go to tools, convert, and we will um, create keep outs from the selected objects. Okay, now if we zoom in here, we can see that that is now a layer specific keep out. And now we can go to our polygon manager and we can create a polygon from the board outline and we'll put that on the top layer and we don't want it to remove islands or necks and click OK and OK again and so now we have the polygon poured over the top of the board. Now you can use this technique rather than plain layers um, if you really want to get those stacking stripes in there. In fact, this is the only workaround for that. And now when we look at this in 3D, and I will remove the mask layers and silk screen, you can see how that, um, in fact, let me do this. I'm going to uh, place a line We'll make this, yeah, 0.2 millimeters, that's fine. I'm going to put it right along the edge of the board. Okay, so now when we go into 3D, you can see this is, this right down the center of this line is the edge of my board, and because we placed that layer specific keep out, it pulled back the copper. So that gets us our copper pullback on this layer, and then we can see our stacking stripe coming through to the edge of the board. All right, well, I hope that answered your question. My name's Chris Carlson. Thanks for your time.